Storytellers Creative Arts is a Florida nonprofit. We're a faith-based organization. And basically, we use the arts to heal and transform lives. I had struggled with addiction, had a length of sobriety as well, but um, during my sobriety I really never had God in my life, had never had a relationship with God. And what led me from my past to come here is I ran into depression. It just seemed to get worse and worse and worse. Um, I just lost all hope in life. We work with people that have been abusing drugs for most of their life. We work with people that are cutters. I never cut it up until I was like 50 years old. And I started cutting, I felt some type of sensation, like feeling, um, just so I know, knew I was still alive. When I was early in recovery and being somewhat resistant to the idea of God, there were plenty of Bible studies and there were plenty of people that wanted us to go to church or take us to this church or that church. But when it came to something creative, um, trying to introduce God that way is novel and I think um, it's something that I was more receptive to. It's very important that not only feel comfortable in that creative setting, but as we bring the story to the surface, we have to connect God to that. Some of the sessions and the other things that go on in rehab are very intense for them, and um, I think you had a way of helping them let their guard down and open up. It's the power of God's story that works in the creative artistic process that is redeeming lives and bringing hope to broken people, especially here um, in Collier and Lee County. Uh, so David Lawrence Center has uh, been active in the community for 50 years, providing support for adults and children uh, that have mental health and or substance abuse challenges. There is an epidemic of opioid crisis going on. My husband is in recovery. My friends are in recovery, I'm in recovery, and the numbers, you know, I'm kind of a numbers person, I, uh, you know, the numbers aren't good. Last year uh, was the first year that we surpassed uh, motor vehicle deaths, overdose deaths, uh, surpassed motor vehicle deaths. It's definitely more progressive now, you know, I don't mm -hmm. think it's just because the nature of addiction has death that pops up every now and then, it's getting tougher and tougher out there for um, for, for people to stay connected. So storytellers, uh, by using the, their creative expression of art and music uh, and, and faith, um, using those holistic um, treatment methodologies, uh, really have a profound impact on our clients. My first couple of years of marriage were fine in terms of my use of alcohol. But after that, it became more and more um, Instead of buying, a, you know, having a drink sometime, I would have several drinks at a time. And it, it, it almost destroyed my family and my business. I've always believed that um, if you can save the father, you save the household. Or if you can redeem or heal uh, the broken heart of a child, um, I believe that that would cause a rippling effect into the whole household. Uh, Watch each other. Not me. The storyteller in the sanctuary, I think she just finished up a story. It might be the first time some of those, the kids have heard a storyteller actually tell a story. And then not only just tell a story, but then do a craft, the drumming outside. You know, you, I was walking outside as they're in rhythm. And I know a lot of these kids. I've known a lot of these people for a long time. And I'm, I'm like, wow. And see, I was watching him. He's putting the stars down. He's showing how to shake the brush to put the stars. And he's talking about how God said, let there be light, and how God you know, created the universe. That's, it's things like that, that real subtle, where people hear it. Well, at age three, my brother and I were dropped off at a babysitter and our, my, our mom never came back and got us. 
And my brother and I were in foster care for a number of years until we were finally adopted uh, by a family when I was 10 years old. And got moved around from home to home and uh, you know, struggled with, with all that goes with that. We we're always hoping that our father or our mother would come get us or you know, bring us back home, but that never happened. We, we were ultimately adopted, which was, which was great, and adopted by a Christian family. Um, however, there were issues there, and, and ultimately the, my adopted father wound up uh, in prison for child abuse. I've just faced a lot of adversity in my life, um, from bullying at home to bullying at school, um, from facing the struggles of emotional abuse, sexual abuse. Being raised in a Caribbean home, a, a Haitian household, there was a lot of emotional abuse and physical abuse um, where I didn't feel affirmed. I didn't feel like I could amount to anything. Um, in, that, in that cycle, that, um, that cycle of relationships and abuse um, carried on throughout my life as a teenager with different people, whether it be in that Caribbean home or with my black American step family, um, where I wasn't affirmed. I wasn't told how great I could be. I work for the Pace Center for Girls, as I said earlier, and it deals with girls that are at risk of going into the juvenile justice system due to traumatic events that have happened in their lives, and they're now trying to navigate those and cope with them. Um, kind of a reflection of what my story is. And in that verse, it basically gives us purpose. It basically tells us that we were made in God's image, that we are we are a finished masterpiece of art, which only God can do. And I believe that as masterpieces, uh, myself being one, we're a work in progress. Well, I was 39 when I was declared legally blind, but I knew up until that point, a few years before that something was going, going wrong, but did not face up to the music. I've played guitar basically since I was about 10 years old. Guitar playing is almost like riding a bike. You, you, don't, you don't really lose it. So I was able to keep playing and have bands even though my eyesight diminished and I had to start relying on, on friends to, uh, for rides. I think a lot of people will tell you that's probably the hardest thing is to give up your driving. Um, to be at the mercy of someone else, I guess you would say, period. Creating gives me peace, whether it's artwork, pottery, which is artwork, or, or singing. Um, so I just, I, I, I am truly blessed that, you know, you look at life and I think, would I want to change something? And I don't think I would ever want to change something because where I am right now today is probably the best place I've ever been in my life. And it's, and it's through the, the healing of God. I think that God has given me an outlet to be able to express my creativity, my feelings, things that I kind of imagined in my mind what things would look like, and to try and put it on paper. Um, I had no hope, and every day I, I wish I were, were to die just because life seemed like a struggle. Everything seemed like a hassle. And since I put God in my life, and um, bringing art to my life, I'm a whole different person. You're, you're in a very um, unique uh, presence here in our recovery community. Um, it was a, it, like I said, it was a, a void that, mm -hmm. that you filled, that God sent you to fill, you know, because there were some, there were some people being left behind, I think. I mean, sometimes you don't have to wear a badge that I'm a Christian, but just who you are, how you come across, our patience, and that, that just flows out of all the storytellers here. People appreciate that. And I would talk a lot about the love of Christ that we can show without saying a word. I have no idea what I'm painting until typically what I do when I paint, I'll throw different colors 
Yeah, I'll start um, seeing or finding images within the colors I paint, and then I just go wherever it takes me. Um, I believe it's a part of me communicating now, but it's also a, a part of God communicating with me. What I see storytellers doing with the arts is offering people who are hurting a blank canvas. Storytellers creative arts has definitely colored my life. <laughs> when you put a blank canvas in front of somebody, you're giving them the opportunity to create a brand new story. People who've been hurt in the past, their lives feed off of their past hurts. And so they're constantly reliving their previous story. And when you have a blank canvas or, or a blank sheet of manuscript or just a, a piano in front of you with keys waiting to be played, you don't have to refer to your past. You can create something that's brand new that is a new creation. And that's ultimately the gospel message. We've been made a new creation. And the arts demonstrate that in such a powerful way that we can, a lump of clay, we can turn it into something that might be what our future looks like rather than reflect what our past has been. And that's powerful and that's healing. And I think that's worth supporting. We're not complete yet, but the master artist, the one who is making that masterpiece and who is uh, cleaning us up on the inside and, and the outside um, is showering us with his love and giving us hope.